Hello, my loves. Welcome to our two-part Twin Flame Union Soul Talks. Before we get started on part one, if you want to magnetize your twin flame back into your life, check out our Soul's Plan Twin Flame program. It works and it has been changing lives every day. We literally get daily emails from beautiful souls that have run into their twin flame or have gotten a text message from their twin flame all because of our program. Try it for yourself and see how magnetic you are. And now on to our video. Hi, my loves. So it's Joanne and Elizabeth here. We do this from time to time and it's going to be more times now because there's just so much to talk about in this twin flame journey, like so much. And today we want to talk about like how mind finds, and I get this all the time. I know Elizabeth hears me all the freaking time. Me and this journey is out of the world, cosmos level stuff. It's emerging. It's a oneness. It is out of this world, my love. And then I start feeling into the oneness so much so that it becomes almost ruminating, almost push. So then I call Elizabeth and I'm like, this is not fair to live on earth and have this oneness, but I can't experience the oneness past the oneness where we can have the most beautiful, intimate or beautiful talks, but I can't like think about it again. It's happened. It's gone. It's done. And then you're present now. And yeah. I can't be human. I cannot connect the way I can with everyone else. Why can't I be a human? Why can't I feel emotions? Why can't I vent and live like a human with my soul? <laughs> I know it sounds really nice now that I'm explaining it this way, but seriously, this is a valid question. This is like, from mine all the time. I'm always asking this. Like, I, I know, I know I have appreciation and gratitude for being with my twin flame. I choose my twin flame. I would never be with anyone else. No one else can resonate because even if I tried anyone else, I know what it feels to be with my twin flame and it's out of this world. It is like, it, it is literally like fireworks in my heaven on earth. I'm not trying to romanticize it. It's just nirvana. Being with my twin flame feels like pure peace. And I'm merging with God. I'm becoming my true God essence. I'm feeling and experiencing God's love tenfold. So for me to do that and to relate with someone else through mind and feed each other through mind no longer resonates for me. And I bypass it. However, I am still human and I live on earth and mind likes to ruminate on that Cosmo stuff I told you guys about. So here's an example for you. And then Elizabeth, if you can add on why this twinkling journey isn't fair for mine. Okay. And I'm saying mine because I, we want you guys to know we have these moments, but our job with each other, because we love each other and we are always trying to get deeper in soul. We're always trying to get deeper into our truest version of ourselves, Whether we like it or not, I always remind Elizabeth, okay, you're totally in mind right now. Bring it back to now. And she does the same for me. But we want you to know we have these same complaints that mine has too. We do. We feel them too. We experience them too. And so my example is in the middle of the night, I wake up. And I'm with my person, by the way. And my person is asleep. But I wake up and I remember our experiences, those nirvana, oneness, out of this world, cosmo experiences where the intimacy doesn't even describe the oneness of our oneness, where he will say us being physically together doesn't describe you just want to cry out of soul, out of love, out of pure, unconditional love. And so here I am laying here thinking about it. And I know he shouldn't, but that's just me living on earth. Like I had a really beautiful experience, right? Just like if you were to go to Disneyland and have a beautiful experience with your children, you can lay there and like, remember the experiences and have a really good experience with it. My person is asleep. 
And mind is like, ooh, ooh, ooh. And it does that over and over and over. And because I am human and because we live on earth, I want to experience it. I want to experience it. I want to experience it. And that's push. It's push. And it took me a while to be get out of it and was like, be present. Just feel his hand now. He's asleep. <laughs> He's no longer with you in that oneness that you were experiencing. You're going to bring it back to now. And so I called Elizabeth like pissed. <laughs> like, this is so not fair. I want to be able to experience the joy and the bliss and the oneness and still like remember it. What's the point of memories then? I think that's what I said to you, right, love? What's the yeah. point of memories then if you're not going to be able to like enjoy them? And she just said something so beautifully. She was like, You're going to have to Michael Singer this one, love. Like the good and the bad all just come through you. And I can get through the bad really quickly. I can. I know that I'm not mine that's ruminating on the bad. But why is it wrong? And I understand now, obviously, I'm sharing this with you because I know you can have these frustrations too. Why is it wrong to indulge and feel into the good? Why? Why can't I feel in the good? Why can't I just feel on it a little bit more? And what Elizabeth told me, which is mind blowing. And you, if you want to share it, love, but no, I, I guess I can share a little of it. So you, you'll know what, I, what, yeah, she was like, you're telling, because soul is experiencing all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, all in betweens. And it is just being in it, right? If you're choosing that experience in the past, which has already happened, above any experiences now, then you're stuck in that one experience and you've developed a clinging to that experience, the good or the bad, which keeps you in that, which is developing a a, a samskara, which is like crazy to me. I understand holding on to it from pain, but when you're doing it on the good, you're clinging to it to where that one good is better than the now, which is well, not true. Yeah, go ahead. So love. This is, and this actually brings me to something else I wanted to talk to you about with today. That's so freaking huge. So basically these samskaras that Michael Singer is talking about are what we almost refer to as like triggers, but they are basically these emotional energy blockages that we have blocking our energy pathways which, you know, from, um, you you have these emotional samskaras, good and bad. So the, the memories that stood out to you that were either super uncomfortable or disturbing, and you didn't want to feel them or experience them, you shoved them down and it became these samskaras, but also the good ones that you didn't want to let go of. So what happens is let's say for you, Joanne, you're, you're holding on to a good one. Well, when that type of situation happens again, the energy is going to hit that samskara, whether it's good or bad, and it's going to create this, it it creates this, this expectation for the good ones. It's creating an expectation that if this now moment doesn't live up to that, that memory you have created and clung to, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed. So that's why you can't cling to situations is because it's like, a, it's almost like a lose-lose. You're setting yourself up to be disappointed if the new experience, the present moment experience doesn't live up to how the mind clung to the former. And now you're, you can't enjoy this now moment. Your experience, right? I wanted to be an earth. I wanted to feel like I live on earth and I wanted to feel the joy and I want to feel that. Our people, so this is what I want to just really clarify, because here's what happens with the twin flame connection. This is the problem for most people. They're approaching the twin flame connection like a soulmate. And that's totally not what this connection is. This is an energetic connection. Your person is you. You're balancing your own soul energy through the other body and other mind. This is you. This is a merging of your one soul. This is a reunion. And because we've been thought and conditioned that love is a certain way to show up a certain way for mind, you have to 
love me, give me the hugs that I want when I need it, show up the way that you show up for me, the way you show up for your kids. It's just very conditional. Wait, wait, and, wait, go ahead. I, yeah. I really, there's one way we explain it that I, that completely resonates for me that I want to share because people yeah. confuse conditional love they confuse it with just giving in with um, the other person showing up no matter what. Right. So this is the thing with the action, your person unconditionally loves the truest you. I want to really emphasize that they unconditionally love the truest you, which is your soul, but Mm -hmm. your mind is not you. So if Mm -hmm. you were wanting them to love unconditionally, the mind, that is not mm-hmm. what they're going to do because that's not you. So you're asking for unconditional love for something that is not you. And so their role is to be there as a reminder for you to come back to the truest, authentic version of yourself, which is your soul. And when you do that, they mm-hmm. are so freaking unconditional. That whole they thing are. that you guys want, which is unconditional love, yeah. that them when you're in soul. So what do I mean by that? You get, you get what mine actually was wanting, but you can't have it when you're expecting it and showing up for it through mine. When you approach this connection completely through soul, through the unconditional love, not through mine's needs, not through mine's expectations and mine's preferences and the, the judgment that mine has on how relationships should be. When you can approach it the way you would as soul, which just is, which needs nothing, which is everything. This is that energy that I was telling you guys. When I am in this energy, and when I am in this energy, they are loving. They are, they don't go anywhere else right? So many people's fears is they're going to go be with and find in someone else. No, who would resonate the way your twin flame does with you when they can't reach this anywhere else? Now, if I'm in mind, if I'm obsessing about them, if I don't know how to become my truest version of me, which is soul, which is what allows us this one soul energetic space to be together in these two physical bodies, for me to align in soul, you you aligning in soul is aligning to the space where they will show up the way you're showing up to them through soul and everything the mind desired, everything that the mind wanted them to show up for you it does naturally happen, but we, we're not expecting it. We don't want it. We don't want them to show up the mind, how the way mind wants them to. They just do because there's nowhere else they're going to go. They are committed to you, right? When you're in this place where you're balanced and you're aligned with soul, there's nowhere else they want to be with. You are it. They look at you like you are looking at them. They see you the way they feel you see them. They show up with this God love, this unconditional love where I give you all that I am because you are me. It doesn't need to prove itself. It doesn't need, it doesn't need any of that. And that's why there was so much turbulence between our connection in the beginning, because I want them to show up a certain way. I need them to show up a certain way. That's the only way it works because that's all I've ever known. And every single time I go back to mine, and I forget who I am, they cannot show up that way with me. And so I didn't change. I I didn't change how I want to be loved. I'm getting it as a byproduct. I am. Because they're my twin flame, I'm still getting everything that the mind wanted. I am. But if I approach them through mind, They can't meet me because it's not that our twin flames don't want to be with us. It's not like they're consciously saying, I don't want to be with this person. When they pull, they're not doing that love. They're not trying to avoid you. They love you unconditionally. They can only show up to you in the way that you allow them through soul. It isn't them choosing to be out of your energy. 
It isn't. They, they prefer to be with you as much as you prefer to be with them in this energetic space of the soul that you both are. That's why being with them feels like there is no time and space because soul, you truly are in it. And, and the problem is a lot of people romanticize this and think this is something to romanticize. And, and they want their twin flame to show up a way a soulmate would. A way a soulmate, a family member, a friend, anyone that we've related to, we can approach it through mine and our family member, our friend, they're not going to like pull. They're not the, it's the energy, the energetic pull. It isn't them choosing to be away from you. They didn't choose that. The energy just doesn't allow them to be near you anymore because you're no longer in soul. You're no longer being the truest version of you. They're simply a catalyst for your one soul alignment because they're your soul. So sorry, go ahead, love. I, I wanted to just clarify that because I think a lot of people think, oh, Joanne and Elizabeth are in the whims of their twin flame. In order to be with your twin flame, you're going to let them do whatever the hell they want. And that is not true. They don't do the things that, okay, we give them the freedom, but in that freedom to choose, they choose us. They don't want anybody else. They are like a lost puppy, I would say. <laughs> they are. They're, it's that's like, why, it's that's like he's, why. In my, he's, in his, he's in his knees, like to me, the way mine wants it. And I don't want it. Do you see that? I don't the, want them to be that way. It's why they are so drawn to soul. So we are the one person. Mm -hmm. The one person that will, when we're in soul, that loves them unconditionally, no matter what they're doing, we don't judge yeah. them. We have no preference. Yeah. We have no expectations. And we give them the freedom to be their truest version without that judgment. Because think about it. Everybody else in their life, they're interacting with on that 3D level. So they're interacting through mind. They're interacting through judgment. They're interacting through like all of these people's preferences and expectations. And then they come to us and it's like, they have this freedom to just be. And it, it, it's so funny. They so very real for them. And so when we are in soul and we give them all the freedom and all the space and we have no judgment, no expectations, it's like they can just breathe. And that's the peace that we mm -hmm. give them. And that's why they don't go anywhere. It's like, they can't get this yeah. anywhere else. They can't even watch a TV show without pulling from that's the energy. That's why... <laughs> That's why they're like the lost puppy. I, I know it sounds cheesy the way I say it, but it does. It feels like that. They are in the whims of the energy. They are indebted to us through the energy of unconditional love where they are. Oh, I'm, I'm going to the right. They go to the right, right? Wherever I'm going, they're flowing to. And it's not me asking them to. They want to be in my space all the freaking time. They crave my space. I am all the space they want to be in because there's nowhere else where they can feel this drawnness of soul. And maybe it's the energy, right? It is. It's, you can literally manipulate the energy. How can someone just show up in the middle of the night at your house when you're in soul without any explanation? Is it their soul that just brought them there, right? Like that's the magic. That's the energy. That's the science it's just showing up for you when you're in alignment. This is the connection. The connection is simply the, the energy. You're aligned with soul. You're in the energy. You embody your true you. And because your soul loves you so much, it brought you a physical person to balance your energy to always remind yourself you're in soul. You, you show up the way you would in soul. You don't need to be with your twin flame. You don't have to be with your twin flame. In fact, being with your twin flame isn't the journey. The journey is you getting deeper in your soul, getting deeper in yourself. And then the person keeps coming in. <laughs> they do. And then when the person comes in and you show back up with expectations and seeing them through the way you would show up for every other relating experience we've had, all the soulmates and family members we've had, all the relationships we've had, then they go back again and not, right? The way that your person pulled when they see mind energy, especially when it's your person, 
they feel that energy. It's not them choosing. They are not saying, I don't like this person. I don't like her anymore. The energy just will not allow it. It will not allow it. It is a constant pull. It's not one day. It is an accumulative of alignment. It's not I'm in soul. Where's my person? It is I am soul. I'm embodying soul. I'm in the essence of soul. And I'm aligned with soul. And when I am in this energy, my soul has to be in my energy too. And I stay in this energy. I don't do it for them because I really love this energy. And I love being who I am because I've been mine my whole life. So why would I want to go back and align in mine? And that's why I told you guys, I can never resonate with a soulmate connection because I don't want to stay in mine. I go home. I literally, after a full day of interacting with everybody in mine, I go home and I can be by myself, including my person, because they are me. I can be by myself. I can just breathe and not have to talk to mine with other people, not have to fill other people's minds needs. I get to be in soul and they don't know how to be in soul. So of course they're just here giving you what you are. It's so peaceful. And I know it does, the, the, the soulmate thing doesn't resonate conditional. It's always been conditional. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful connection. It is for anyone who chooses it. But it isn't soul. It isn't teaching you to get deeper in your spiritual work. It isn't reminding you when you're not in soul. A soulmate connection, you could be in mind and it's okay. They want you. If, if a soulmate heard me all night ruminating on what we just experienced, they would like that. <laughs> but because my person who is not, doesn't even know I was doing that is my catalyst for my soul. What kind of a freaking Buddha level energy am I working on where I experience the most bliss and I have to give it away and thank the universe for it and trust that I'm going to experience more bliss or pain. I don't cling to the good or the bad. I am experiencing all of it. Because this is my heaven on earth in this now moment, in every now moment. There's no experiences above another experience that tops that experience. It's always in the now. Go ahead, love. Okay, so something you said a little bit earlier on is what is going to lead us. And this might be a two-part series. This might be the second part of <laughs> this video. Yeah. So you said they are not, they are not your journey. Your twin flame is not your journey. They are the 